little feedback. There we go. Okay, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the meeting of September 3rd, Parks Recreation Community Service uh, Commission, and let's have a roll call. Uh, the agenda for the September 3rd, 2008 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall and on the City of Glendale's website on Thursday, August 28, 2008 at 1 p.m. Uh, Commissioners Khan? Here. Bob Fogel? Present. Sharkey? Here. Sinanian? Here. President Ward? Here. Okay, first item on the agenda. Uh, first item on the agenda, uh, introductions and presentations. We have none. Uh, and oral communications, we have none. So we're going to go to item 4A. It's consent item, approval of minutes of the commission regular meeting held on July 2nd, 2008. Okay. I just had uh, one little correction, correction on uh, my comments. And I had where it says, and auctioning uh, off city property on eBay, I did not mean auction off City Hall or George's <laughs> desk or <laughs> I'm in park surplus <laughs> property but uh, <laughs> but I commend Iris on a beautiful job with the minutes she did great but I couldn't resist <laughs> but other than that I'm, I'm fine okay I'll make the corrections thank you uh, any other corrections to the minutes do we have a move for approval I'll move I'll second, second. Okay, we have first, second. Roll call. Yes. Commissioners Khan? Yes. Rob Fogel? Abstain. Sharkey? Yes. Sinanian? Yes. President Ward? Yes. That's corrected. Okay. Item 4B is approval of minutes of the commission special meeting held on August 14, 2008. Okay. Um, I'll move the motion. Well, let me, let me ask a question. This is the expanded version of the minutes that we're talking about here? Which includes our Which includes discussion. our discussion and everything else. That's okay. correct. I, I would move that that version be adopted. A second. Okay. Commissioners Khan? Yes. Bob Fogel? Yes. Sharkey? Yes. Sinanian? Yes. President Ward? Yes. As amended, very good. Okay, the business agenda? Under business agenda, we have item 5A, reports for information only. The first one is Social Service Resource Guide, Youth and Family Services. And uh, President Ward, members of the Commission, I'll be filling in for George this afternoon, who's unable to make the meeting, uh, to conduct the meeting. Our first item, I'd like to call uh, Rita Kachakian to the podium. Rita is a member of the Youth and Family Services section in our department. Um, for those of you who don't know, Youth and Family Services um, conducts outreach or social service outreach for not just the, the teens that approach us for jobs and um, any type of social service issue, um, but also their families. And so both Rita and her manager, Carolyn uh, Fuentes, are here this afternoon. We've developed a really nice resource guide for the community, so they're here to uh, tell the, you all and the community a little bit more about that. So, Rita, with that, take it away. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rita Kachikin, and I am a uh, community services coordinator for the Youth and Family Services Program under the Parks Department, of course. Um, and we'd like to present to you today um, our recently printed social services resource guide. Um, this resource guide is a compilation of all the social service agencies and organizations in the Glendale community and surrounding areas. Um, we developed this guide uh, to be a comprehensive directory that our partner agencies can use to uh, make social service referrals to the residents of the city of Glendale. The directory includes resources um, for things like housing, homelessness, child care, um, health care, including uh, mental health, domestic violence, um, drug rehab programs, um, employment referrals, and much more. Um, the, as social service providers ourselves, um, we understand that individuals that walk through our door face a variety of challenges. Um, for example, an individual that comes in um, needing employment resources may need other resources as well. Um, for example, they may need emergency shelter, clothing, um, emergency food. Um, these problems often overlap and we find ourselves needing to address these issues simultaneously to provide quality customer service. 
Um, a few of the entities that have received this directory include the Glendale Police and Fire Departments, the judges of the Pasadena Juvenile Court, um, the YMCA, YWCA, local schools, libraries, um, the probation officers in our community, um, agencies such as New Horizons Family Center, Verdugo Mental Health, the Employment Development Department, and all the other departments of the uh, city of Glendale. So um, my coworker Marco Tejadilla and I hand deliver these directories to our partner agencies um, that we work with and everyone seemed absolutely grateful um, and enthusiastic to have a new tool to be able to assist their, uh, to assist the public. Um, we believe that not only this tool, um, it helps them to provide better customer service but it also cuts down the time and effort that it takes to research um, these resources for the individuals that they work with. So um, from one personal experience of mine, when I took a stack of the resource directories to um, my, place of, my place of previous employment, um, my coworker at the Employment Development Department was so grateful to have the uh, resource directory and she did mention that she was actually looking to um, create something like that for the use of the Verdugo Job Center. So we're, um, we've definitely received a lot of great feedback from all the agencies and organizations that we've taken it to. Um, we have copies for everyone here today. Um, we'll be happy to provide as many copies as anyone would need um, if, they're, if you need to distribute it anywhere. Um, this directory is also very conveniently available online at the parks website. Um, so if any changes or any updates come up, we will be doing it to the online version. So if anybody have, has any questions or if you would like to request any copies, um, I can provide you my work phone number, which is area code 818-548-2700. Again, that's 818-548-2797. So if anybody has any questions about the director, I'd be happy to answer them. Wonderful. When was the last time this was updated and when do you think it might be done again? I can answer that. Actually, this is the first one of this particular type. Uh, several years ago, I think it was back in 2003, we had a youth resource guide that was only services for youth in Glendale. And this particular guide um, has services for all age groups in it. And so this is kind of, this is really the first of its type that we've done most recently. Um, and also we have built into the youth and family services budget uh, within the two-year cycle to be able to update this guide on a regular basis. And as Rita stated, it is available online so we can um, even update it electronically more quickly than we can update it in printed version as well. So. Very nice, very condensed and concise. It's a lot of information here. And plus, if it's updated, with can do it by page, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was a great idea yeah. that they had to put it in the binder format, right. and that way, yeah, you just yeah. the last one we did was a kind of a hardback bound almost, uh, and so you. Yeah. almost force you to have to go through a reprinting of the right. whole binding process and everything and this way we can just have new That's inserts right. put in so kudos to the staff I think they did a really nice job are you making this available like at all the public libraries and other locations yes. so, that, okay. mm -hmm. so people can one other find them. one other suggestion for the the revised version when you at, end up doing it is having on the table of contents a list of the organizations and the pages that they can be found on because sometimes someone might be looking for New Horizons for example oh, okay. and wouldn't know what you know what page they're on exactly so New Horizons page whatever 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 that's very good feedback kind of great, idea. Right. great endeavor any other comments oh, looks good thank you thank you very thank much you. thank you both nice resource Okay, the next uh, item. Okay, item 5A2 is ball field renovation projects update. The first one is a Shoal Canyon ball field update. And uh, Shahin Bagumian is here from our capital improvements section to give you a brief PowerPoint presentation on his recently completed project.
Excuse me, can you pull that mic up? It's hard for me to hear you a little bit. Thanks. Maybe it's not on. It's not even on. Probably all of you, you know the facilities, and the facility over there, we have three lighted ball fields, concession stand, restrooms, and a maintenance yard. He's not showing on the TV, though. Oh, you're right. TV. Yeah, we need to... Uh... Here comes our technical difficulty. <laughs> There you there. go. Yeah, thank you, Anna Maria. <laughs> to the rescue. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> How about the picture? How about the picture on the TV? It's yeah. GTV6 can cue that up as soon as he begins. Okay, I guess one more time. Sure. <laughs> total, total available funds for this project was one million and seventy-seven thousand dollars. Which under Prop 12, we're going to get city will get a reimbursement of. $593,000 back. We started this project on November 1st of 07 and got completed on July 23, 23rd of 08. Uh, the facilities over there, we have three lighted ball fields, concession stand, restroom, <laughs> restroom buildings, and a maintenance yard. Uh, that's the aerial photo of the ball fields prior to renovation. Now, the project included the following. The installation of a Moscow sport field lighting to the existing light standards. Basically, we replace all the light fixtures on existing light poles. We replace the conduits. We replace the conductors on the ball fields. We installed two 30-foot tall light poles in a parking lot. And we also installed some security light surrounding the ball fields. We constructed uh, brand new dugouts and backstop for each feed. We also replaced the benches and the bat racks, bat racks on each dugout. And we put a brand new irrigation system. Uh, each field, we replaced the scoreboards and uh, we installed two new file poles. Uh, we graded the, the fields and replaced the turf. Field number one and three, we changed the uh, dirty field to grass, basically. So field number one and three, they have grass in field now. We also replaced the chain link fence surrounding the ball fields with a safety yellow cap on top. And this is an aerial photo of completed project. And probably when you go out there on September 27, 28 for the Relay for Life, you can inspect personally how much we've done there. And that's it. If you have any questions, I'll be more than glad to answer. A lot of work. <laughs> well, I have to say, you know, Gary and his staff helped me a lot. And Lou, Raymond, self, yeah. And Brittany staff, being a pretty face. Joanne, Vendido, Gabriel, they helped me a lot. So it was a, basically really? a teamwork. 
But the man of the hour is Shahen Bagumian. <laughs> he's the one that makes it all happen. So we appreciate his support, but truly he's the one to give credit to. So he makes it happen right. He does make it happen. Thank Very you. nice. Looks good. Looks Thank great. You. How do the um, kids that play on it like it? Well, they haven't started yet. Yeah. Um, I think they were so they've, they've scheduled to play this weekend, I think. Correct. And then uh, baseball doesn't begin up until the spring, so... Uh, but they're all very anxious to get on it, so, and have their home field back. <laughs> I might go up there before relay. <laughs> oh yeah. <coughs> we can go together. Why? Right. <laughs> Last time I took you to the toes. <laughs> Not dressed like this though. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, look you. forward to it. Okay. Thank you. Thank all right. Okay. What is next, please? Okay, next on the agenda, Montrose Little League Field and Sports Complex Field number two update. And uh, Coco Panosian or Gary Morello are here to give us an update on the uh, Montrose Little League Field and the other laser grading that's taking place on our other field. You don't have to excuse me. I've got a case of laryngitis, so I'll do the best I can to get through this. Uh, short and sweet. Uh, we did two ball fields this year, Montrose Little League and the Sports uh, Complex number two. Uh, Montrose Little League went first. It was really bad shape. It really needed to be done. They, um, we went and sprayed the entire field out, infield and outfield. We sod cut the entire field out, and the company came in, and we took all the sprinkler heads out and capped them all off. The company came in, crowned all the existing roots that were left, uh, laser graded it, and I believe on the 10th of September they'll be laying about... 660,000 uh, square feet aside, West Coast Turf will come and be laying that. And then shortly after that, the uh, ball field up at the sports complex will be done too, same exact way. Spray it out, kill it, remove it uh, with a sod cutter, have them come in and grind it, and add whatever materials they need to add. Uh, cap the sprinklers head, heads off, and then go back through, and after they're laser graded it, bring the heads back up, check for the coverage, and then lay the sod over on that one too. We're going to try to do a couple fields a year, whether that materializes or not is yet to be seen, but we're going to really try with the, with the manpower that we have, because even though we hired two contractors, uh, a lot of city staff still had to do a lot, of, a lot of the work. The spraying out, which myself and somebody else has done, uh, the sprinkler heads and the uh, coverage tests and the sweeping and the sod cutting was all staff. So the two companies were basically a laser grader and a sod uh, installer. But uh, by the end of uh, oh, end of September, or middle of September, the one field will be completely done. And by the middle of October, the other field should be completely done, giving it a couple, <laughs> a couple three months to at least root and hopefully have um, a couple years of life. We'll see how well that goes. But um, that's what we're in the process of doing right now. Okay. Any Very questions? Good. No, I know that your crew's moving around and getting a lot of these parks as they can before the end of the summer and yeah. get them renovated for the school year, which just started this week. Uh, let's go on Glen Oaks. Next presentation. Our next item is Glen Oaks Park update, and uh, Audrey Golnazarian is here to give you a <laughs> brief PowerPoint presentation on the status of, status of Glen Oaks Park. Good afternoon, members of the Commission, mm -hmm. uh, President of Board. I'm here to give you an update regarding the, the project at Glen Oaks Park. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. I have a PowerPoint presentation for you today. Absolutely, yeah. I just want to be able to point at the um, specific locations on the site. This is Glen Oaks Park. It's an aerial perspective. Um, north is up. Here we have the community building in this section right here. And this is the uh, subject of the presentation today. However, I wanted to let you know that at this park we have ongoing projects uh, that consist of um, the playground in this area that's um, already completed, actually. 
We installed new playground equipment just recently. And also, if I can retrieve my <laughs> pointer, here is the site of the, um, the existing, or actually demolished caretaker's house that was demolished again back in August. And currently, Peter Verheilig of our section is working on plans for new landscaping in this location to replace where the area where the caretaker's house was. And Sean Toro um, was, is the uh, project manager for the playgrounds. He will be coming to you in November with a full report on all the playgrounds that he installed recently and is in the process of installing. Here we have the um, uh, perspective view of the entrance, the main entrance of the Glen Oaks Community Building. This is the arcade. This view is the um, the men's restroom before the renovation. You can see the um, handicapped stall is not compliant, um, the one with the bars, and also the fixtures and the accessories are non-compliant. And um, at that time, there was no sloping to drain floor at this uh, at the restrooms, and that contributed to heavy water damage. When we uncovered all the finishes, we uncovered, you know, um, heavily water damaged floor joists and and wall framing and and heavy damage to the girders. You can, if you notice, you can actually see uh, moisture in the in the soil beneath the girder there. This is another view of the um, the restroom as um, repair was in progress. So the solution was to remove all the the uh, damaged framing members and install a pan. Uh, you can see in this shot that there's the the pan and the um, the chase installation that's in progress. And over the pan, we poured slope to drain concrete floors. This view is the wall. It's the chase and the plumbing rough. We have here the water resistant substrate installation in progress. And the uh, um, porcelain tile and epoxy grout in the, in the women's room and in the men's room. And here we have the finished renovated women's restroom complete with sloping to drain floors, handicap accessible stalls and um, fixtures and accessories in the men's room. There you can see a new window there. And um, we had new light fixtures, practically completely renovated restrooms. It's wonderful. And they're open to the public, by the way, right now. Oh, it's open yeah. now? The restrooms are open, yes. But the main building is not yet. Uh, we're going to move to the exterior of the building next. Um, you can see uh, the, the rafter tail is heavily damaged. Uh, due to dry rot and termite, and the uh, the other shot is of the the sagging roof. And here's the after shot. This is the new newly repaired roof framing and new roofing. Um, next, uh, we're going to move into the interior of the main community room. This is before the renovation. You can see the stage in the background there and the old flooring, and then the next shot is the uh, after we removed the flooring, we found some damage in the subfloor, but not too much, luckily. And currently, the uh, interiors are um, being painted. Painting is pro in progress. Uh, this is as of Friday of last week, and um, painting is still in progress. Next is the flooring that's coming in next week. And we are hoping to actually um, anticipate its completion is mid-October. Um, we have a, a, a grand opening celebration that will happen on Saturday, October 18th. I know President Ward has already accepted uh, the invitation to become the MC for the, mm -hmm. for this event. I'm extending the invitation to everyone. Uh, the commission members and the public, please come and celebrate with us. Um, and I should say that this event coincides with the uh, Homeowners Association's 
annual pancake breakfast. So it's oh. it's more reason to attend a celebration and, and celebrate, basically. Will the ceiling remain uh, open like that, or is it going to be covered? No, we think the ceiling is, has a lot of character, so it will remain as is. However, it's being painted and refreshed. Good. And the light fixtures, are they going to stay the same, or you know, uh, do the covers on them? Actually, the light fixtures will stay, but they will go under uh, some type of a renovation by maintenance in the future months to come. So they're cleaned up. Yes, but we will be installing new fans, thanks to Brittany and her her uh, staff, and also new um, window coverings, vertical blinds, and and. The kitchen is also being refreshed and renovated with a new sink, stainless steel sink and counter. And uh, that's that's about it. We think that's going to look very nice and brand new. What kind of flooring is going to be installed? It's linoleum sheet flooring. It is a renewable resource and it's a very long lasting material that does not give off VOCs. It's a low VOC product. So we try to go with the environmentally friendly product. Well, I know this Glen Oaks Park community building is really loved by the community and heavily used from Boy Scouts to other community groups that meet there. So it's a great renovation. I'm glad we got to see it on the steps that you're taking. And the restrooms look good. The building's going to look great. So. Please come and celebrate with yeah, us. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Great. The playground equipment also. Very impressive. I know. It's yeah. being already heavily used. Every time really? I'm there, it's full and the Very. kids are, you know, everyone I'm not surprised. <laughs> no. What did you guys do? You took down the caretaker's unit, you said? Yes. And then what is that area going to be used for? Is it just open space? I'll it is. Go ahead. I, um, when I do my commission report, I'll have a, oh, okay. a, a photo shot of what's going to happen over there. Okay. I think Gary has a report. That, Thanks. Yeah. Thank you very much. If there are no more questions, okay. that concludes my Any presentation. Very Thank nice. You. Okay, just okay. Uh, monthly activity reports. Yes, monthly activity reports. The first is recreation and community services. Uh, President Ward, members of the commission, this month's activity report is really just a recap of all the really nice family fun events that we had this summer, our movies, our concerts, our theater in the park. Uh, you know, each year we see our attendance grow in each of these categories. Um, and especially this year, I have to, George isn't here, but he would say to me, I told you so, we did have Elvis come out this year, and it was our most attended <laughs> concert ever, so I have to give him public props on that one. Um, and again, our Theater in the Park program has... Uh, almost doubled in attendance this year um, compared to last year. Uh, so much so that we had folks calling us well in advance. Is the group coming back? You know, if so, which part? So um, we're really pleased to see that one take off as well. Uh, we've also included our traditional numbers in terms of our customer service office monthly report and our civic auditorium. Um, and we've also included a section here on our quarterly registration report. And this gives uh, myself and my staff an opportunity to take a look at um, the number of registrations that we take in at each of the customer service locations. Um, back gosh, maybe three or four years ago, we used to just have the one location, the customer service office, where you could register yourself or your child for a program. And since that time, we have opened up the various community centers, brand studios, the ARC, um, as customer service locations where uh, families can go and register for our programs. And so it's nice to see that those outlying facilities are being utilized in that capacity. And we do have hopes in the near future to also include our Parks Administrative Office as a registration site. Not that several folks come in, uh, but from time to time we do have individuals come in, and you hate to have to turn them away and send them somewhere else to get their business taken care of. So that's something that we have to look forward to. So um, if you have any questions about the report, I'll be happy to take those at this time. Two things, Brittany. One, the customer service office, does that include online registrations? It does, although what we're finding is, you know, over the past few years we turned it on, we have turned it off. You know, when we turn it 
off, people look for it. But I think one of the problems that we have with it is the um, software program that we use, there's really about two or three of them out there that are, are really pretty good, and we use the Safari RecWare uh, program. It's kind of an extensive um, instruction process to go through to establish an account. And a lot of times what we find in Glendale is folks get frustrated with it and ended up end up just calling the customer service office and saying, can I just register by phone with a credit card? So we do keep it turned on for those who are computer savvy or computer friendly and want to just take care of their business online. Um, but those numbers are, are very small and I mean approximately a dozen a year. So it's really not that many, but we do keep it turned on just in case. Um, it does happen to take off as a trend. So, and just to comment on the movies, I remember the first year <laughs> that we did those, and it was like, if we build it, will they come? <laughs> and it's really great to see that it's become the program yeah. that it is. Congratulations. Thank you. I should also add, um, since I'm talking about recreation and community service events. The nice thing about the movie program in particular is that we, um, last year we worked with the Kenneth Village Merchants, who are again working with us this year, um, and now the Adams Square Merchants, uh, they're working with us, and so over um, this next month, both Adams Square and Kenneth Village will also be showing movies in their downtown areas as a collaborative project with us. So that's really nice. And I believe they've been advertising in the, the newspapers. Um, and we do have it up on our website as well, the, the dates and the actual movies that they will be showing. So uh, if anyone has any questions, want to know what movies are showing, visit our website or call our main office at 548-2000. Uh, we'll be happy to get you that information. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, the next monthly activity report is the CIP projects report. President Ward, members of the Commission, um, this month I'll give you a brief overview of what we've been working on, what we've been planning, and, and um, what we'll, we think we'll be doing in, in the near-term future. So uh, um, in terms of pre-planning, we are now beginning to look at Maple Park and at Griffith Manor Park. Uh, those two we've um, had on the back burner for a while, but now we're going to uh, as we move other projects through to completion, we'll start to move those forward. So we'll bring those into the pre-planning uh, process, and as soon as we have concept plans ready, we'll bring them to the commission and then to the council. So I expect that we'll have something for you probably around January on both of those projects, uh, perhaps sooner, but I, my sense is that January is about about when we'll, we'll have those ready for you to look at. Um, in terms of... What we're actively bidding currently, uh, we are out to bid, I'm glad to say, on the adult recreation project. Oh, good. Uh, the council has has approved that. The redevelopment agency yesterday approved $2 million in agency funding for the project, so we have a, a full budget for that project, and it's currently out to bid. Uh, we'll have a pre-bid meeting with, with contractors next week. Uh, the bidding process is about 60 days. So sometime in October we'll be closing bids, and then we hope to uh, award a bid in late December uh, and start a contractor to work in January of next year. So there'll be a mobilization period uh, to allow for fencing and getting ready for demolition and that, and that should happen in January. So that's the ARC. Cedar um, Mini Park is two phases. One is the bungalow restoration and then a separate bidding for the uh, development of the park. We're already out to bid on the bungalow, and in fact, we just received bids today on the bungalow. So we had our bid opening. We received some very competitive bids on that project. Uh, the second phase of that is the park uh, component. We'll be taking that to council on September 16th to get authorization to go to bid on that piece. Um, so we expect to, to, to get to work on that and have that all done by the late spring of next year. So it's exciting to see that project move forward as well. We concluded bidding on the Civic Auditorium Fire Sprinkler um, um, renovation project. This is, was the uh, fire sprinkler system for the parking garage. Uh, we had two bids on that project. Uh, both bids were unresponsive. Uh, they had technical 
flaws in the bids, although we had one very, one of the two was extremely competitive. We received authority from the council to negotiate with the low bidder, uh, and we're currently in that process. And we think we can, um, although he had technical difficulties, difficulties with his bid, uh, his bid on whole was, was a good product. And so once we can um, um, shore up those technical problems in his bidding, we think we can negotiate a good price and get that, uh, get that product uh, into service. Uh, the bids on that were significantly lower than the engineer's estimates. And we've had some, some really, really good assistance from the fire department in going through and analyzing the design work on that renovation and coming back with some really good repairs that will serve us well and, and at the same time save us a lot of money. So, so we're, we're really fortunate to have that, that uh, situation well in hand. Dave, what, yes, excuse me. Good. what does it mean that there's technical difficulties with a bid? Um, You'll get things in bidding such as they forgot to include their, their bid bond documents or their ex insurance, although they had insurance, it may have expired and they didn't have a current insurance document. They, they, they're, they're still insurable. They simply didn't meet the requirements and technically you have to disqualify them uh, because you have to use the same rules for, for everyone. Uh, in another bid, they left out a unit price. So they gave us the lump sum price, but didn't give us the unit pricing. In fairness to the other bidders, everyone else met those requirements. Those aren't optional components. Um, so you're compelled. Those aren't minor uh, deficiencies. We reviewed it with city attorney's office and, and uh, agreed that uh, with the attorneys that those um, weren't things that you could just overlook. So those are the technical things. It wasn't as if he um, wasn't a licensed contractor or something like that. It's yeah. more along the technical lines for that. So will that create a new bid because both of the bidders were both? Well, we had the option of going back out to bid or in this case, because we because they were substantial, uh, substantially complete bids and, yeah. and in all other respects, valid bids, we asked for authority to negotiate a, a bid with the low bidder oh, and, and receive and approval for that, let them correct that deficiency. And we also identified some other work components that we'd like to get done yeah. and see if we could come to an acceptable price and then get those done that we didn't didn't think we could get done because of the original estimate, but the uh, the pricing had come in so uh, 30, 40 percent below the estimate. So we're able to get some more work done, and that'll that'll take care of us. We're in a great bidding environment right now. Yeah, yeah. I imagine. So pretty uh, hungry out there for work. Yeah, there's a lot of folks looking for work, and, and so our, our timing for this this work is good. Um, in the pre-development process, we'll be going to the council on September 16th with the Pacific Pool project. So we'll be taking that uh, design that we brought before commission and, and uh, met with the community on. So we'll be noticing the community and then bringing that before the council on the 16th, uh, requesting them to adopt a master plan and then giving us authorization to go forward with development of design and construction drawings for that project. Um, so that's moving forward. The Riverwalk project, um, that is near a final building permit. And uh, once we have that in place, we'll be ready to, to get uh, plans and specs and come before the council for that. So we're close on that. There's some easement issues that have to be resolved on that as well. So staff is working on that. And I think we'll have that wrapped up here shortly. Um, in construction, you've heard about Shoal Canyon that was just completed. And Brittany's right. Shahin is, is he's a, just uh, one of the, the, the people that not only is he a joy to work with, but he really looks out for the interest of the city of Glendale. He's a first-class man, and, and he does a first-class job for Glendale. We're, we're really lucky to have him on our staff. Um, Audrey spoke to you a little bit about Glen Oak, so you've, you've seen all of that. The other project that she's working on is Dunsmore, very similar to the Glen Oaks building. An older building, had a lot of deferred maintenance and uh, similar problems with water damage and, and that. And so we've gotten through most of that, and that project will be done sometime in November. So you, you 
we'll be sending you formal invitations uh, for the for the Glen Oaks ribbon cutting on October 18th. Um, we'll also be sending out invitations, but we want to get on your your dance cards now um, for November 15th for Dunsmore ribbon cutting. So that's a tentative date. We'll get that firmed up with you 10 a.m. Um, and we'll be doing something up, up there with uh, the f November 15th. November 15th at 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Saturday. Both are Saturday mornings. And the, the Glen Oaks event, as Audrey said, is going to be a lot of fun. We're doing it in conjunction with the Homeowners Association. It's their annual pancake breakfast. So, uh, so uh, we're get to come hungry, huh? Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Actually, <laughs> somebody else is cooking. Um, um, playground equipment. You heard a little bit about that. We have six playgrounds that we're installing equipment in. Three are done. Three are in the process. Um, so that's moving forward. When we get that finalized, we'll have some type of ceremony to to uh, to commemorate that work. That's been a lot of work. Uh, Sean Toro, one of our assistant project managers, really done a really done a great job with that project, and a lot of coordination with Gary's staff from the maintenance side. So fixing the fall zones and all types of uh, things like that that um, really really improve the quality of 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 the park and its use. Uh, one thing that we've been working on for a while now is park security issues. Uh, we've just delivered um, a trailer to Brand Park and we're in the process of, of hooking up the utilities to it. And that's going to serve as a ranger substation on a pilot basis. So we're going to try it out for three to six months and see how that works in terms of improving security there at Brand Park and also being um, a base of operation for patrol to more of the urbanized area of, of the city, Maple, and, and our parks down here, Maple, Palmer, Carr, all of those parks. So we're going to try it on a pilot basis, see how it works. If it's successful, then we can um, look at building a, a permanent facility. Um, so we're, we'll uh, keep you abreast of that as uh as we move forward, we'll evaluate it and then, then come back with a proposal. That should be up and running. Gary uh, is in charge of the Rangers. We're just doing the construction for him, but he's developing a staffing plan for it. Um, but that should be operational by Friday of this week. So uh, there's some other pieces to the security improvements, tree trimming, lighting, gates, and fencing. And we're uh, getting proposals to get bids on those. Um, so, so that's moving forward as well. That's what we have in construction, um, events and activities. I, I think everyone has has heard us talk about the the campfire events. We had the s'mores uh, end of summer campfire event last Saturday. Um, Jeff Weinstein and Ranger Eric uh, ran that event, and they did a great job. It was a really fun time. The kids loved it, and. It was it was really something. Nice um, coverage too in the news what, press. What was the attendance about? Probably 75 to 80 folks. Great. Um, a lot of little bodies, so it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lots of hands. Lots of. I hands was teasing Dave, people. asking him if he wanted to become Some a lawyers. recreation staff member, and he, oh no, no. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> it it um it was really fun and. The, the staff did a great job, the community. I was just looking at, uh, at a thank you card that came in from a community member. And folks just had a great time. It was a fun event. Um, we have another event coming up, and we'll, we'll pass these out to you for um, date is that? September 13th will be um, the next hike. And um, it's also their astronomy night. So. This is a follow-up to the last astronomy event that they had. Uh, this one they're calling Stargazing um, oh, and Night Hike. So this will be, again, Jeff Weinstein and, and uh, I think Ranger Eric will lead this as well. Um, so if you're in town and if you're available, um, the this is quite a bit of fun. They get community volunteers to do the astronomy component. I'm not sure. I believe they're from Glendale College, but I'm not sure. Um, so it, it's uh, turning into quite a nice program. Jeff's doing a great job with it. it really is. Um, so those are the those are the key activities uh, that we see uh, in the future. And then the only other 
thing and, and then I'll answer any questions that you have. You may have heard or, or you may hear about an issue with, with lead in artificial um, soccer fields, artificial turf. Uh, there was uh, recently something that came out from the New Jersey Department of Health uh, with a warning regarding that. Uh, we have two fields that are artificial turf here in Glendale. We've checked into that and the city attorney is continuing to follow up. Uh, the two fields that we have are made of a polyethylene product that is metal free. So our, uh, our provider and the product that we've used is not on the list of, of products that they're concerned with, although the city attorney uh, is continuing to follow up and look at the report and make sure that there's no issue with that. So I uh, just want to let you know that we're aware of it and uh, staff is looking into it. But right now, our, our, uh, our fields up at the sport complex are not an issue, not a concern. It's good to hear. Right. I have some questions. Yes. Uh, a couple questions for you, Dave. Sure. The, um, the adult recreation center, you said, starts construction in January 2009. I'm sure you've told us this before. When does it complete its construction? We have a, a commissioner, Con. we have an 18-month course of construction for that project. We think we'll finish sooner than that, but that's that's currently the outline schedule. 18 months? So about 18 months. Okay. You mentioned also that in the pre-planning, you started off with mm -hmm. a few different projects. And you know in the past I've mentioned about sustainable design or green building techniques. Sure. Is that something when you come to us, are you going to include that as part of your presentation or you're looking at that as part of this pre-planning phase? Uh, absolutely, uh, Commissioner Khan. The, the green building design is is something that the city's taken a, a policy stance on to incorporate and the goal is to obtain a silver rating for a LEED certification for all our facilities. Projects like the ARC that have already been completely designed, um, although they have many of the environmental um, energy saving components in them under Title 24, um, weren't, weren't designed um, under that guideline. What we're doing with that project in particular is going back and looking at it. Um, rather than, than, than stop that in its process now, we're moving forward and going back to look at it. Uh, the ARC was designed under the Uniform Building Code. We changed codes in January to the International Building Code. If we went to redesign, we would then have to redesign the whole project under the new code. Uh, that would take eight to ten months and cost us probably a quarter million dollars. So we're going to move forward, uh, but I want to make sure that everyone um, listening knows that the Title 24 requirements are, are the basis of these many of these energy efficiency um, requirements, and then it's building off that to get the LEED certification, the green building certifications. But your point is well taken, and it's something that we're moving to the forefront on with all our facilities. And the ARC, we have the good good fortune to be uh, near a reclaimed water main line, so we'll be able to irrigate that with reclaimed water. So that'll right. that'll really be a big right. step toward energy conservation at that facility. Okay. Just one last question, just out of curiosity. You mentioned in Brand Park there's a new security trailer that's being installed. Where is that being installed at? Um, what parking lot would we call that, Gary? That's the ball field parking lot that's uh, <coughs> almost it's right close to the restroom building that's by the ball field. It's right in the middle of the park, um, actually north, south, east, and west. It's right in the middle of the park for the most part, we, and it's the lower parking lot. We call the lower or the baseball parking lot. We tried to get it in, in a location where it could be highly visible. Uh, it, 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 it's a substation, so the rangers will, will be there, uh, but only to, 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 I believe, to check in and then go on their patrol. So they might be there at periods of time doing paperwork or sure. or just checking in. They won't be staffing it um, <coughs> eight hours a day. Uh, but there is a plan to have their technician um, um, staff staff the facility um, on a 
on a part-time basis, and we'll try and target peak hours for that staffing so that if someone had a problem, they could go to the substation, notify the technician who could then radio or telephone police or, or the rangers, and get just get more of a, a visible presence in the park and also get some eyes and ears in the park. Um, so that we're able to, to more actively manage those issues, not only for Brand Park, but for all the parks, and, and use that as, as, a, as a substation to start that out. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Staying with the substation just for a second, will there be a phone or something on the outside of the substation that where they can pick it up and for an emergency if, no, if, it, if the station is not um, manned? Um, Commissioner Rothfogel, that's not part of our plan currently, but that's not a bad idea. Uh, we certainly have the ability for people to go into the library itself and request assistance, but, but that's not a bad idea, and we can certainly look into that. And then um, the ARC is being done in stages, or is, it can, is that whole area going to be closed at once for the whole period? The, um, the ARC will continue to operate, and it will will be built in phases, so it will remain operational. Um, however, there will be parts of, of the site that you simply won't be able to utilize because we'll, be, uh, we'll be demolishing grading and, and, uh, and doing construction on those sites. But we'll continue to serve meals from there and also meal delivery will meal preparation will happen there and, and Brittany's staff does meal delivery from there so that we, continues to go on we will also still maintain a level of programming in the cafe building mm -hmm. uh, which is closest to the main alley. parking lot in yeah. the alley yeah so um, we will continue to have that open until such time when the new building is ready to be occupied and then we'll move everything over at once that way we don't have any meal disruption, programming disruption will be good. Yeah. And last question on the on the river walk. Are we coordinating at all with um, either Burbank or LA? Because they're they're doing stuff on the river walk too, I understand, so that it looks seamless. Well, Commissioner Ralph Fogel, the um, your, your your point is really uh, the key to this whole river project where connectivity is is the essence of this entire project so uh, our staff works um, John Pearson of our staff is very involved with with all the agencies that are working on the river um, and in fact Northeast trees from Los Angeles is our, our design and, and developer for our component of it um, in terms of timing um, those things are out, out of our control for the other cities and that um, but uh, there's definite coordination occurring and they meet I believe on a quarterly basis this regional committee from the county and John is part of that and it's with them yeah I realize that we have no control over the timing but it's going to be nice to have um, it look like it's just one long park that's great. It will, and and of course it'll have different amenities in different you know different parts. Ours has an equestrian amenity in it, um, so um, other pieces will be more focused on passive recreation, and and uh, certainly there's a bicycle path and pedestrian paths and all of that. So great. It's all meant to work together. Be very nice. Have a question. Yes. Uh, Dave, uh, back to the issue of artificial turf. Yes, sir. Uh, there was uh, actually a report on NPR about a week ago about artificial soccer, you know, turf soccer fields in, in New York. How and and uh, this was particularly about uh, fields that were made of recycled tires. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the the good thing about that was that it's recycled uh, material. But apparently that accumulates a lot of heat, and, and at, at the bottom on the turf it's something like 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And is this something that I know we only have two fields that are artificial? Is this something that we may be faced with in the future? Is this an, an issue that that has any potential here? We um, are continuing to look at the use of artificial turf. Columbus soccer field is an, one I failed to mention today, but it's another one that we're in the pre-development. Uh, stages on and it's it's something that we're going to look at in a, in a lot greater detail 
now with the information that's coming forward. Uh, so it's, you know, it seems to be a great product, but we're going to move forward uh, with a lot more uh, in-depth analysis okay. of that. Heat is, is a definite issue in terms of these this type of product. Uh, Thank you. Commissioner Sanani and I can add to that as well. Uh, we do have, I don't want to say it's an issue, it is something that occurs with the rubber pellets that are spread out throughout the field mm -hmm. and so one of the ways that you mitigate the amount of heat produced is you do actually water to some extent the artificial turf area to keep the temperature down. Cool Not all day, just you know 15 minutes uh, maybe once or twice a day and just to keep the temperature down when it's in use. If the, if the fields aren't being booked that it's day, no, point to, it, no yeah. point to run the water. Um, and it is uh, not reclaimed water that we use. Um, it's uh, fresh water. Um, we have to do that for health purposes, but the savings to the environment is the amount of water that is utilized versus having to water the fields to grow on a regular basis. So. Thank you. Good concept. Okay. Other questions? Very nice, thorough presentation. Okay. okay uh, Park Services and Park Rangers Monthly Activity Report. And as Gary comes around the bend, he's got a brief uh, PowerPoint presentation for you, including the Glen Oaks. <laughs> Previous caretaker building up, huh? there, yeah. Right. <laughs> well, we got to give him a minute or so to come around the van. You know, Commissioner Khan, you were asking about the Glen Oaks, and this is what my whole thing is on right today. Right. Um, yeah. That was the Glen Oaks building that everybody had seen, and it was all fenced off and uh, was scheduled for demo. So um, you'll see this picture here in the beginning, and you'll see what it looks like right now. And then if you have any questions, you can be sure, sure to ask me at that point. But uh, just to go through the steps pretty quick of uh, what we did, uh, there's what it looked like. There's what it looked like, again, uh, clearing the stuff away from it and taking off the windows and all the breakable stuff so we would have been pop tires and get people hurt. Uh, so it was just wooden nails left. Uh, this is my guys are used to making things repaired, replaced, putting things back together, and they, they get a big kick out of sometimes being able to take something out, tear it down. Huh? Yeah, so uh, they had a, they had a real good time. They did a really outstanding job. As a matter of fact, uh, we had some pretty large pieces of equipment working in there, and then we have a brand new bobcat we got to run. So uh, it was a perfect example of. of using that bobcat because it was a, such a small area to work in. Um, again, the building came down in approximately a week. Uh, they took the whole thing out. They had five, I think, 40-yard uh, bins come in, and they just kept making a, just a, a round-robin rotation. We took the cement out. We took the everything, but there's a, a valve in there for irrigation. <laughs> it's the only thing that's left in there right now. Uh, we graded it. We put in. We brought in some topsoil. We leveled it off. Um, I like the area. It's a great. It's a really super area for a park. It looks beautiful. Uh, we we've uh, like I said, graded it out and uh, smoothed it off. We put in mulch. Uh, right now, it's all mulch area, and that's the final look of where what it looks like now. And uh, Audrey alluded to the fact that uh, Peter, one of our CIP. Uh, uh, individuals is doing a plan for this and I don't know everybody has their own idea on this but uh, the way it sits right now is really nice for me personally speaking I like the way it looks just the way it is yeah. so much larger oh it, it yeah you the house was tiny and yeah it looked, didn't look like there was much area there at all but, but when it, you removed it out it opens it up actually yes it does it makes it uh, it makes it and that's such a nice cool area there's a there's that wall that's uh, back across the back of it there that you see right. uh, that you can use for sitting. People can read books. We're going to put, I think, a couple tables, maybe <laughs> maybe a couple benches, but I don't want a big big parties there. I don't want you know I don't want 20 or 30 people on the corner. Right. But for just a sitting area or whatever, it's uh, it's so cool and nice. The air comes through. It's really a nice area there. 
you got that building out without any damage to any of those beautiful trees. We didn't touch either. the trees, and yeah. those isn't, isn't a piece off any bark yeah. at all. Oaks, so. Oaks and deodores looks great. And we didn't change the grade. We didn't change anything that was going to affect the oaks in later years. That's why I went for the went for the mulch right now. Yeah. Took the concrete out and just left the mulch. That's nice. And again, whenever I have a tree go down and we go through the chipper, I can throw some more mulch in there and and continue that. And I just assume continue that with maybe a couple benches. But uh, from start to finish, uh, it's probably about a three week project. And that was only because we had emergencies to take, take care of. But uh, other than that, the building came down in a week. The mulch was in in about three days. And the grading took about two or three days. What was the building being used for? Just storage? It was actually a caretaker's house that was nothing. It was it had been so inundated with damage from the weather. It was just sitting there. It was just sitting there. And if we wanted to make it useful for the caretakers, it wouldn't have been worth it. It just was so... And plus the oaks that were planted there when the building was new are 40 to 50 years old now and they were uprooting the foundation they were uprooting the piping they were uh, encroaching on the roof so we did as much as we can to mitigate that but it wasn't enough to make the building usable you'd have to repour a whole new slab yeah, and we don't want to affect nicer. the yeah I think it is I think it is too and it came out really nice Peter's going to re redo the sign area where you see the big numbers there, and uh, they're gonna, we're going to do a little flower or planting annual bed in the front, and um, just leave it as natural as possible that we can. I think just to add as well, I think uh, there there was a somewhat of an impression that because there was a structure there, that there was someone in there, and it had actually been vacant for nearly two years. Oh, at least, yes. Um, but I think having the structure there gave somewhat of a comfort to the community. Security thing. Yeah. Um, but it, as Gary stated, uh, you know, we determined a few years back when we went to potentially do a recruitment for that building that because of the roots growing into the home essentially and uh, some of the branches of the tree potentially causing a hazard to the home that really wasn't fit for occupancy. It wasn't going to get better, it was just going to get worse. So, And if you want to save the oaks, that's the only, the only way to do that yeah. was to save all those oaks. That's a pretty nice area. Hopefully we won't have Yeah, that'll enhance the park. That's now security the work, problems there. Work on the community building too. Okay. Yeah, so virtually almost the entire park between Dave's uh, people and myself, we've almost done on you know, the playground, the building, the corner where the caretaker's house was. Basically everything that's, that was there that was usable is almost all brand new. So it's basically a brand new park with collaboration between several of us. Very nice. Good. Okay. Um, the commission and staff comments? Any comments? Commissioners? I have a few comments. Yes. Uh, really three. First is Rock Haven and trying to see what, what's going on there. Um, what, what is there a schedule for community meetings yet? I saw something, I think, in the paper. It was on the city cover. Views, it was the city, city views, views yeah. to do that. So any update on that would be great. Sure. Good afternoon, President Ward, members of the uh, commission. As for Rock Haven, uh, the latest update we have is that our staff was able to install the irrigation above ground irrigation. Uh, I'm not sure when you visit. I don't think the irrigation was in when no, it wasn't. you took the visit. Right. Uh, upon irrigation, we had staff watering diligently. And you uh, should visit now because a lot of the plants, the landscape, and they're, they're flowering. It starts looking, there's more life to it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, the flip side of it, working on the, uh, the website, the website is up and operational. People have been visiting. Uh, there is a link on the website where people sign up for to get to receive updates on any meetings or generally any items that may be going to council. We've had a number of already people that have signed up. The site is www.rockhaveninfo.com or .org. It'll take you to the site. It is linked through our city's main website. Uh, at this point, what we're working on, we're working on hiring. We've already interviewed for two seasonals that we're going to hire, and the seasonals are going to be supplementing the need for a 24-hour security guard out there that we currently have. It'll benefit us because it'll save us some dollars. It'll be at a lower cost, and it will also benefit because we'll have somebody monitoring the site at the same time. So the security guard will be covering the uh, midnight shift, 7 to 7, 
or six in the evening till six in the morning, and we'll have two seasonals supplementing six hours of the day, six to twelve and twelve to six. This way, we'll have some person on site doing some light trimming, uh, keeping with the weed eating and the watering the plants, and also monitoring the site as we go along. And meanwhile, we are looking at uh, ARG, who is uh, Architectural Resource Group. We are looking at getting them a contract. We're going to go to council request approval for them to do the historic assessment at the facility. Uh, we should be able to get in council's agenda within, hopefully by the end of this month with that report. And at the same time, we're talking to uh, a lot of different consultants. We're going to start requesting proposals, uh, requests for qualification proposals to do the master planning process. Uh, and we have requested, some members of the community have shown interest to serve on the uh, committee, the group, the selection committee. And when we do have a consultant on board for the master planning, we are going to begin with the, uh, the public community meetings. We may have one, uh, meanwhile, throughout to give them an update on what has happened thus far and to let them know that the master planning will be coming on board and that we also have some fencing that's going to be going up. Hopefully in the near future, we're looking at some proposals at that. Nothing is scheduled as of yet at this point, but we're looking at next to go to council with the ARG uh, report to get them on, on board as a consultant. Because I think, uh, and I think it would be good to have a meeting even before you get this consultant on board because I think there's a lot of excitement and you don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose that momentum where people start looking at it and say, what are we doing here? Why did we purchase this? Why is it just sitting there? I think the more information that we can get out there like that is, is better. So anything you can do to facilitate that meeting would be great. We'll begin the discussion with Jordan and see when we can start planning for that meeting. Okay. Thank you. The, the second thing I had was I had someone contact me about a tennis court or considering adding a tennis court at Dunsmore Park. And so I said I'd bring it up and throw it out to you guys. So I've brought it up and I've thrown it out to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know if, if, you know, I guess there's one tennis court up there now. Right. And that there's a large parking area or paved area. And I don't know how much use that. It's the parking lot for the park. And uh, I, as far as tennis goes, uh, and Dave can also provide some additional information, but currently we are looking to expand the number of courts at Fremont Park, but Dunsmore Park was not one of the parks slated to receive additional courts. And if we did use that area in question, it would eliminate the parking for the park. Uh, so. That impact the community. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I went up there and looked at it because mm -hmm. I obviously I'm not a I don't play tennis so I don't really but since the person called me I said I'd follow through on it it looks like there is a large amount of parking it's not as if you would be putting up a tennis court and it would take out all the parking um, but it was something that I said I'd bring up so if you can look at it that'd be great if sure. it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense sure. so that was the second thing the third thing I had related to um, the sign at the Civic. Mm -hmm. And does that just advertise um, functions that are taking place at the Civic? Or does it advertise functions that are taking place throughout the city of Glendale? Both. Does Currently, it? its primary function is to post the events at the Civic. Uh, from time to time, if there is a large citywide event that's city sponsored, we will post uh, that on that marquee. For example, Cruise Night, we post it on the marquee uh, just as additional forms of advertising. Um, we have had um, some, you know, m meaning one or two requests to have private individuals say, hey, can I rent the sign, post happy anniversary or happy birthday? Um, and we have looked into what some other cities do, but that ha there hasn't been an overwhelming demand for that. And in those other cities, they do charge a fee for that type of thing. Um, so if that answers your question or if there No, it answered my question. I just wanted to know if it did. Like, for instance, if there's something happening in City Hall, that it could be advertised on that yes. as well. And, uh, for example, probably Relay for Life will be placed up there to let yeah. right. folks know, since that is such a high traffic area. Exactly. Um, and it's making the best use of that sign as well to promote city events. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Speaking of the Civic, <laughs> something, this might be a little premature, but something came up at City Council about possible boxing at the Civic. Is that something that would go through Parks and Rec? 
Um, actually, the the issue with the boxing is not just a civic auditorium. I think there is uh, somewhat of a um, uh, belief that it was the requ uh, there was a request made by a promoter to utilize the civic for a boxing event, um, and so the ordinance was placed in question. The ordinance is actually an ordinance uh, that which prohibits boxing, sparring, or wrestling throughout the city. Um, so it is not specifically to parks and recreation. That item has been agendized uh, for September 30th of this month uh, with our city council, and so it's to address the citywide ordinance. Um, so there was a little bit of uh, kind of a, a belief out there that it was specific to the Civic. But we And we have at the Civic over the course of the last few years seen uh, not just boxing promoters requesting events, but karate. Um, we have had some cage fighting promoters. Uh, so the original or ordinance was established back in 1947. Oh. Oh so this is uh, really taking a look at all of that. Back, way back in the day, they weren't dealing with the cage fighting and you know, all of the UFC uh, events going on. And so um, we'll be bringing forth all that information to council at that time. So thank, thank you, you for addressing okay. that. Hmm. Uh, unique. That's it. Uh, any other commission comments? Are you going to talk about the uh, shoal and the cancer? Yes, I'll. Actually, I'm going to turn that over to our ledger staff, Mr. Comments. Dave Ahern, uh, <laughs> who is also the president of the committee for Relay for Life. I'll allow him to uh, give it a That'll be before our that. next commission meeting. That's gracious of you, <laughs> Ms. Pilati. Um <laughs> Commission, uh, Prison Award members of the Commission. Um, Glendale Relay for Life, it's um, our 24 hour cancer walk. It's a nonprofit activity, um, and the whole community participates in this event. A lot of city staff have been involved in it this year. I'm uh, the event co chair. Mayor Draymond is the honorary chairman, and Mari Abrams from Glendale Adventist Hospital is uh, our other co chair. And I'm really proud to say that we have all three hospitals actively involved on the committee uh, this year. So it's really becoming more and more of a community event. So we're in our fifth year, um, and it's going to be September 27th and 28th at Shoal Canyon uh, Ball Fields. So those recently um, and beautifully <laughs> renovated ball fields by, <laughs> by Shahan. Um, and it's it's uh, going to be a great event this year. We've got, uh, uh, in addition to, to to the 24 hour walk, we've got a lot of participation from restaurants throughout the city. Uh, we serve um, breakfast, lunch, dinner, second dinner at midnight, and then another breakfast. So it's one of those events that you gain weight when you go to it, um, <laughs> even though you walk quite a bit. Um, and we've also got a kids camp this year sponsored uh, by the Parks Department and put on by the, um, the uh, Children's Museum of Los Angeles. So it's going to be a really fun, uh, fun kids camp in, in addition to all the other activities. So um, as many of you may know, one of our committee members, uh, we um, have a number of folks that we, we remember at Relay, our, our theme this year is celebrate, remember, and fight back. So we have a couple of committee members who are currently uh, in a fight with cancer, and we recently lost a committee member, Mary Miller. And last night's council meeting was adjourned in her memory. Uh, she'd been on the committee for uh, the last four years and had helped chair the midnight dinner. So. Um, has real special meaning this year for us. So um, I hope you guys uh, have time to come out and join us and and um, have fun. It really is a fun community event. If you have children, it's going to be a real fun time for kids. So bring your kids. Great. Thank you. It's a great cause. Any other staff comments? Thank you. Excuse me. Uh, any written communications? No, we have none. Okay, adjournment. I guess our next meeting is October 1st at 3 o'clock in the same chambers. And we'll be closing at uh, 4.18. We're adjourned.